Hi, it's Jan Beta, and I'm still here with my beautiful Commodore SR6140 calculator from the 70s. I made a video about this thing a couple of days ago and I am going to make another today because there's some things that you pointed out in the comments that I want to take a look at and also I want to make a power supply for this. So this is a follow-up to the previous video in which I took this apart and looked at some capacitor leakage, replaced the electrolytic capacitors in this. And I also looked inside this uh, original AC adapter that this came with, which is a very, very crude uh, thing, which was kind of typical in the 70s. This was meant to charge the internal battery in here, rechargeable battery, that Gerd, who sent this to me, thankfully removed before it could do any damage. There only was a minor amount of capacitor leakage and damage on the board that we've seen in the last video. This thing, though, uh, I decided that it's not really worth recapping. There's one electrolytic capacitor in here. This is a very simple transformer, two diode rectifier, capacitor smoothing, non-regulated power supply. I noted the polarity of this little phono plug that it comes with. And uh, yeah, this thing has some issues, especially the mains connectors here on this European plug. They are kind of loose and I suppose I could glue them in place and make this work. It does still work, actually. I measured this last time, uh, but I'm not going to use this with this calculator. And since the battery is removed, we need a replacement power supply for this, which is kind of an easy thing because uh, this is just pretty regular, 6 volts, 200 milliamps. And I ran this from my bench power supply without any issues, set up to 6 volts. DC, so we are going to be fine with something like this, which I bought, which is a very regular modern AC-DC adapter that outputs 6 volts at 1 amp. The only issue is that it comes with one of these barrel plugs, which are typical these days, so we need to put one of these on there. I think I bought this on Amazon just randomly. It's very lightweight because it's a modern switching power supply in there, no huge transformer, unlike this one. It's probably not a very good power supply, but this is much worse, especially regarding safety, so we're going to be fine with this, I guess. I am going to strip this plug here and put on the plug I used on my bench power supply, which is the same as the original one, basically fits the calculator fine. That's the first step. There's two wires in here, no shielding, just like the original one. So, should be good. One black and one red wire. I suppose the red one is probably the positive, but we're going to measure that to be sure. Oh, there we go. This is rated for one amp. These wires are pretty thin, but it should do. And of course you could buy a better power supply. Uh, there's all kinds of price ranges for these. I just went with a cheap option. So yeah, let's uh, determine the polarity. I'm just going to plug this in and measure these wires. Yeah, it's spot on six volts and the red wire is the positive, the black wire is the negative. The fluctuation you saw is just because my probes didn't make good contact, but uh, I basically just wanted to determine the correct polarity. So let's take this apart. I'm going to put the sleeve over here right now, because I tend to forget doing that. <laughs> just removing the wires I soldered onto that and solder some new ones on. So the tip of our funnel plug should be the positive. Just going to put some electric tape in here to insulate it a bit better and then we're good to go, I think. And there we go. We made a nice power supply for the calculator. Let's, let's see if it works. One thing that got pointed out in the comments is to insert these plugs before you power them because uh, due to the nature of this it's going to slide over the ground contacts and it's going to short ground to the voltage for a little bit before it's fully inserted. So it should be inserted now. Let's plug in. It 
should work in theory. Yep, no problem whatsoever. That did in fact work. And the connection is way better than what I had in the previous video. <laughs> Let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs of all kinds. They also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding. They can populate your boards for you. All these services are of the highest quality and delivery is fast, service is excellent. I highly recommend checking out the link in the video description should you be interested. Back to the calculator. The second thing I want to tackle is this spot here on the display, which is actually scratched a bit in this particular spot. And some eagle-eyed people in the comments pointed out that this is exactly the spot where our little button is on this here. So when I slide this in here, which I can't because the plug is in there, this, uh, this side here. This touches the display and that's uh, it's smoothed out but it's enough to scratch the display it seems over the last 45-6 years that this was stored in there and taken out and uh, this thing got closed. So I'm going to put some padding on there I think. And I have this assortment of uh, feet for furniture actually that I think are going to be quite ideal for this purpose. And these are really sticky. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a round one. These are felt, I think, or fake felt. They're definitely softer than this thing. I'm just going to stick one over this button there. And this doesn't look bad, I think. It should prevent further scratches. Let's see if it still closes up fine. Yeah, it even feels a bit better now. Nice. Another problem solved. This is, of course, a bit of a workaround kind of thing, but uh, it's going to do. And I love these kinds of solutions. This is just something that I thought of the day I made the other video, basically, when the com comments came in. So the next thing that got pointed out is that there was this little package in this calculator, which I didn't know what it was. Uh, somebody commented, and I pinned that particular comment on the comments section, uh, that that would be a step-up converter because the internal battery of this didn't provide the 6 volts needed to power this. So it needed to step up the voltage slightly to make this work. And my theory is that since there was a rechargeable model of this and like a disposable battery model, the R on this one says that it's a rechargeable model and there's also a D version of this exact calculator which has disposable batteries. And I think the little charging circuit step-up converter thing is only present on the rechargeable ones because the rechargeable batteries at the time weren't quite as capable as what we are used to today and uh, they didn't reach the voltage necessary to power this. I am quite curious about what's in there, so we're going to take this apart one more time and have a look at that. And by the way, thank you so much for your comments. I'm always learning a lot from them. Or most of the time. Some comments are just rude, but not so much on, on something like a calculator video, which uh, everybody seemed to have enjoyed. And people were sharing their stories about these calculators or this general era of calculators, which are quite interesting. I missed that era nearly completely. I, I remember my father had one of these, uh, like a German model, I, I'm not sure which brand it was, but uh, one of these LED calculators. This actually held up fine, my little tape fix here. Uh, I'm just going to cut this open and have a look inside. There's three wires coming from this, not sure what that's all about, but we're going to find out shortly. So let's see if I can cut in here. And I hope I can uh, put this back together once I have this apart. This is pretty thick. Heat shrink tubing. And there's cardboard underneath. So it looks kind of, it's kind of an afterthought, which it probably was. <laughs> that's a real, that's a little circuit board. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So yeah, there's a toroidal thing in there, diode, 
another diode, several bent uh, ceramic capacitors, two uh, transistors here, and it is indeed it's a, it's a circuit board, which was just wrapped in this. So yeah, I think it seems very likely that this is really the step-up converter circuit that the person who commented mentioned. So yeah, that's what this is. I suppose we don't really need this if we are not running this from a battery, but I'm going to keep it in there because it is an original part and I want to keep this as original as possible, of course, as usual. So I'm just going to put some new heat shrink tubing over that and uh, shrink it again. And that's that. And I'm not going to take this apart because that's going to be really messy. I think this is just a relatively simple step-up converter circuit. Or maybe it's a charging circuit of some description, but I think the step-up converter theory is more likely. Super interesting. And thank you, commenter, whose name I can't remember at the moment, for pointing that out and for making me curious enough to have a look. <laughs> so I have this heat shrink tubing here, which should be large enough for this purpose. And this goes over that, I hope. <laughs> and this should be better than ever. Yeah, I think we're good. Another thing that got mentioned is that uh, these things sometimes uh, got square roots wrong. So somebody mentioned in the comments that the square root of 25 was wrong on theirs, but this one says 5. It was 4.99999 on somebody else's Commodore calculator. This one seems to be accurate, at least in that regard. I didn't test everything, of course, and in the manual it actually has some sections on stuff that isn't quite implemented correctly in the programming of the chip in there, but it's pretty sophisticated stuff that I'm certainly not going to use anytime soon, so I'm not too worried about that. This is a very nice everyday calculator and we now have a nice power supply for it that I can use to yeah, actually use this calculator. One other thing that got pointed out is that this uh, label here, which is a metal sticker basically, it has a little worn off corner there and I'm just going to use a little permanent marker here to cover that. It's much better already. <laughs> I love this kind of stuff. So somebody saw that and as this looks pretty immaculate otherwise, that was kind of a problem. I didn't see it when I looked at this, but now I did see it and it's covered. Looks better, definitely. It's not perfect, of course, because it's, it's impossible to find the correct ink that they used originally, probably. But yeah, little spots like that you can just cover up with some kind of permanent marker here. Done that many times and it usually at least makes it not that obvious. So that's all for today. I'm sorry this was a short video. There is longer projects in the works in the background but I didn't finish any of it yet so stay tuned for more. Hopefully I'm going to have a larger longer form video available in a couple of days. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for your time. Hope this was interesting. Thank you for commenting and making me aware of some things I didn't catch the first time around. So thank you all for your time. Thanks for sharing your stories in the comments. Special thanks, of course, to everybody who supports me on Patreon and on Ko-fi and on the YouTube channel memberships page and elsewhere. The links to that are in the video description. Hope to see you again on this channel sometime. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.